<laughs> you know, <clears throat> there seems to be a habit in uh, Christian circles, and that's to tear down rather than build up. It seems that people, as soon as they discover something, or they think they know something, they have to run out and prove to themselves that they know it by showing to themselves or maybe to others <clears throat> that they they have a handle on it, that they can go out and condemn someone or challenge them in ministry or or in some type of tearing down, you know, of what God has built up. You know, Jesus said very simply that he told his disciples and this is one of the messages that I, I just blows me away that pastors don't teach it more. Maybe they're jealous or maybe we need to think about it more and just apply it to life in general. But the disciples came to Jesus, you know, and they were they were checking out the scene, you know, and they were looking around and they said, hey, look over there. John's disciples, they're baptizing him. Jesus said nothing, and they came to him and said, should we stop them? And he said, no. He said, don't stop them. He said, no man receives anything except it was given to them by my father. Hmm. You would think, well, wait a minute. John's the one who has to decrease, and Jesus has to increase. So wouldn't Jesus want John to kind of like back off so that Jesus could get more? And the truth is, no. Jesus knew that his father directed everything that he causes the sun to shine and the rain to fall and the wicked and the good so every day those circumstances that came his way he could trust the Lord in and another time they came to him and said look those guys are are talking about you in your name doing things you know and he said don't forbid them he says, whoever isn't against me is for me. Now, that's probably the weirdest, most bizarre scripture that Jesus would have said or statement that I know for myself. I was kind of dumbfounded when I read it that I'd been a Christian quite a while before I really got a handle on that one. And I kind of looked at it and I thought, man, that's not the way Christians act. They act like if you're not with us, you're against us. <laughs> and they usually try to come up with some Old Testament way of saying it. Kind of like the old eye for an eye and into this religious kind of, if you're not in our crowd, you're one of the others. <clears throat> and always fearful of anything that's going on that they're not in control of. You know, so I kind of, I thought about that, you know, and then, then I realized, you know, Paul had the same problem. Paul literally got knocked off his horse. I mean, here he was, going along, doing God's will, you know, arranging for, and he didn't do it himself, but arranging for Christians to get persecuted and imprisoned and condemned. And he was very adamant about it. He was pretty convinced about what he knew and what he thought he knew. Until one day Jesus came to him and quite frankly, knocked him off his horse. And uh, Jesus asked him, you know, what are you doing? And he says, what do you mean, what am I doing? <laughs> he says, why are you persecuted? He says, well, who are you? <laughs> and I think sometimes Christians that tear others down are like that. They don't even know what they're doing. You know, they don't realize they're tearing people down or fighting against God himself. Because Jesus said it, if you're if you're not against him, you're you're for him, you know. And I mean, don't get me wrong. I've seen some pretty strange things, you know, in my time. And you know, I've said, hey, you know, these guys are teaching this, so be careful. You know, I may not promote them, you know, but I'm not going to stop them from doing what they're doing. I'm just going to kind of steer around them and watch and see and wait on the Lord and see how it works out for them, you know. And, one of the things that I found when I do Facebook ministry is that uh, 
usually the people that are like tearing people down, they don't have that many friends, I've noticed. But the people that are like you know, sharing the Lord and the love of Jesus and trying to inspire others, they seem to have lots of friends. <laughs> I don't know if that's a accurate rendition, but who knows? Maybe the Lord is trying to say something there. But I know for me, you know, I don't need to hear about what's wrong with the world sometimes. I need to hear what's right with God, you know. Is God in control? And if he is, then what am I worried about? Can God take care of it? If he can, then what am I doing about it? If God is God, then why do I have to get all wrapped up about what some man is doing? I mean, to me, it seems like if God is God, then you can trust him. So really, I guess the question is, how big is your God? Can you trust him with your life? I mean, if you decided to follow Jesus, I thought that's what you're doing. You know, you're giving him your life and trusting him to direct you. Or is your personal relationship with God more of a religious idea? Because if it's about religion, then you're going to go out and try to change people. You're going to try to make them into maybe little gingerbread houses or sugar-coated candy-looking boys or girls or whatever those cookies are they cut up and look like little doughboys. <laughs> And you're not going to accept people the way they are, you know, the way God made them. You're not going to look at them as God's project that God is working on. You're going to look at it as your project. And I don't think that I really want to be in a religion like that. I think I'd rather develop a relationship with God, that one where I can ask him questions and he could answer me, that I could ask him to show me where it is in the Bible and he would show me that I could, you know, take the time and make the time to talk to Jesus about the things that he said and the things that he did. And he would reveal to me himself and how I should live. Now, I don't know about you. Maybe you want, you know, to find that security. You know, don't get me wrong. There's great security. You'll feel very comfortable in a religious practice. Because then you don't have to make any decisions. It's all decided for you. But I kind of figured that since I have to stand before Jesus one day, and I have to give an account for my life, for the things I said, the things I did, even the very thoughts I had, I figured that, well, because I have to do that, maybe I should stick with grace and not works, you know, that I need to kind of look at grace like, hey, you know, I need more grace than I need to be thinking I'm righteous. So I'd rather stay on the grace side than stay on the righteousness side, you know, on the mercy side than the <laughs> I need to get, you know, cleaned up side. <laughs> I think I, I don't think I qualify if I'm going to stay on the keep cleaning me up side because I keep getting dirty side. Oh well. So, because I know that one day I'll give an account for everything, then it kind of also made me figure, you know, maybe since I got to talk about what I did when I was alive, then maybe I should figure out, while I'm alive, what it is I should be doing. Now, maybe that's too simplistic, but it worked for me for 35 years, and <laughs> I didn't always do the best, but I tried at times to ask God to show me the way, to teach me what he would want me to say, to let him do what he wanted to do with me and through me and to touch others' lives in a personal way that they could see that, you know, it's not always about a religion as much as it is about personal relationship like kind of like if you ever watched some of those old movies where they used to say well I was talking with the man upstairs you know and they used to say sky preacher and things like that and you know maybe they weren't so far off in some ways because when they talked it sounded like they were really talking to God and God was talking to them maybe just maybe if you tried talking to God 
he might try talking to you. And maybe we wouldn't be so bitter to try to make people better by some form of religious activity that we think everybody has to do in order to find what's true. Personally, I think if you got a Bible and you got God, hey, you're halfway there. <laughs> I think God can take those two and kind of work with you on the rest of the story, you know. And then as you go your way, you know, don't let people, you know, blow you out of the water or put too many kind of strange ideas in your head. But before you lay down and sleep, you know, maybe take it to God and ask Him. I know that's what I always did, and it seems like he kind of brought me along the way and showed me what he wanted for me. Maybe he'll do that with you. Be confident in God, for the Lord shall be your confidence, firm and strong, and shall keep your feet from being caught in a trap or some hidden danger. From Proverbs 3.26 Jesus knew where he came from, obviously. He knew what he was sent to do. Well, that's good. <laughs> he knew where he was going. Okay. When you get that confidence of knowing God and his purpose for your life, you will not be affected by the judgments or criticisms of other people. Cool. You know, I think that's probably part of it is that if we just ignored people that want to tear people down, we didn't give them so much attention, maybe they quit tearing people down. You know you belong to God. You know his hand is on you. You know his anointing is on you. You know what you are called to do. You know that with every breath you take, you are trying to follow him, and you know where you are going when you are all finished. Say to yourself, nothing that happens today can separate me from God's love and his purpose for my life. You know, if you're a caring person, then all those criticisms and, you know, those people, mobs, crowds, stories, ideas that attack you, you know, they, they bug you. You know, they get to your, get your goat, so to speak. They affect your heart, wear your spirit down. But at some point in time, you get to where you expect it and you just go, well, you know, I appreciate your sincere idea of what you think I am or who you think I am. But the reality is I need to do whatever it is that God tells me to do. So I've been asking him, you know, and he seems to be telling me to do this. So thank you for your concern. But I'll just keep doing what Jesus told me to. And, you know, that's the best way to live is that... For you, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, don't worry about what other people think. I think the most important thing is how Jesus thinks about you. And if he died for you, I think he thinks pretty good about you. Might be just important enough that maybe he wants you to spend some time with him and get this whole thing about life figured out. Because a lot of people try to tell me that, you know, Life doesn't give you an instruction manual. I keep saying, nobody gives you a God. <laughs> uh, you could check in with him and find out what's going on. <laughs> I know people like to think they're God because they made a baby, so to speak, and they think they did, and they forget that there's a third part in all of creation, and that third part is the most important one. That's called God. <laughs> in the beginning, God created the universe. Okay, <laughs> but as you go through your day, if you take it in a simple way to just pray or talk to God, you're going to find that as you keep going your way, God will start talking to you. And you'll find out that each and every day can be a blessing. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter how tough it gets or how easy doesn't matter whether you prosper or whether you get poverty. What really matters is, did you do what he said today? That's all you got to figure out. After that. <laughs>
you'll begin to enjoy it. <laughs>